Hi, it's Yannick again. Um, I'm going to continue with my confessions of a reluctant dance mom. And um, last time I was talking about 2015, it had been the most difficult year for us to date in the dance world um, <clears throat> on a personal level because Emilia was injured, but also at a studio level. And there was two things that um, were big lessons for my daughters and for myself. The first thing was that um, one month before um, nationals, one of the senior dancers decided that she just didn't want to dance anymore. She just decided to quit on the team. And um, I remember I was so disappointed. I thought, how do you quit on your team one month before nationals? She just decided she didn't want to dance anymore. And I was not only disappointed in the girl, I'll be honest. I was disappointed in the parents because the parents allowed it. I mean, I was always taught, if you're on a team, you stick to your team. You don't quit. You never quit. Um, you know, if you're injured, that's one thing. But if you, you finish what you started, and then if you don't want to do it anymore, you don't do it. But I was, it was a really, it was a lesson to my children in, in being part of a team. And so I've, I've stressed that always to my children. If you're on a team, you stick by your team. When the season is done, if you don't want to do it anymore, then you can quit, but you wait till it's done. The second one was with the studio itself. Um, there was senior dancers and, and their moms that had been at the studio for years. And uh, it's, it's a difficult kind of thing to talk about because um, it was such a lesson, I guess, in not just the dance world, but just in life is in, in life itself. Um, these seniors, I mean, every studio director, I think, knows that little girls, especially if they dance, want to open a dance studio in the future. That's their dream. And I think most studio directors want their students, once they finish their career in, in that studio, to open up their own studio and, and do what's, you know, see, their, see the success of their protégés, let's say. But I know that our studio director, her, her whole thing is, please don't open a studio that's like within several miles of my studio and don't take any of my students. I mean, I think that's common sense. I, I think it's just loyalty calls for that. But um, there was this group of senior dancers and the moms who had been there for, I mean, over 10 years. You know, the studio director saw them as more than friends, more than students. They were family to them. And after nationals, a couple of months later, uh, one of these seniors had been coaching the minis of the dance team and they kept asking her So are you coming back to teach the minis or are you just not you're just gonna stay on the team? What's your decision because you know, it's almost September. We're gonna go back to um, To practice rehearsals, you know getting everything going for the following season and they were kind of evasive They were like, oh, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know but during the summer during summer camp some of the other seniors would come and my daughter Amelia told me that they would talk to them in secret and they were sworn to secrecy and they were being told things um, like you should leave the team or you should leave the studio, but they were sworn to secrecy. <laughs> Fortunately, my daughter, Emilia, she, she realized something was not right, that that wasn't right. You don't do that, um, especially to somebody who's been good to you and in a place where you're happy. Um, so she told me, um, she got into a little bit of a, issue with some of her friends there but I told her that she had done the right thing because she was doing the right thing what these girls were doing was wrong um, and then it happened two weeks before September before the studio was supposed to reopen for the school year um, yes it was awful <laughs> two weeks before the studio opened that coach that senior dancer and her mom and the other friends announced that they left the studio. They had opened their own studio. They had told nobody. They had done it behind the studio director's back. Um, and they made a million excuses. They, they, they still, to this day, take no responsibility. They think what they did was fine. Um, and, and they don't understand that what they did was a betrayal. This studio director had been always nice to them, always good to them. And what they had done was wrong. Um, and they still don't own up to it, which is the most ironic part of all. Um, 
and it taught such a lesson to my children of what is right and what is wrong what is good behavior and what is poor behavior because if you're doing something that you've always wanted to do but you do it the right way then everybody's gonna support you everybody's gonna back you up but if you do things the wrong way if you hide if you do it behind their backs um, yeah they will be competing against them we don't know when but we know that it's inevitable um, but the girls want to compete against them because they're hurt and um, and it's funny because it still hurts them two years later they're still hurt by this situation it, it was such a big lesson to all of us um, and one of the things that I've, I've always strive I continue to strive with my children is I want them to be I mean I want them to be great dancers but I especially want them to be good people and that's something that I think is is hard in, in this reality that we live in nowadays but hopefully you know we'll keep doing what we can and and they'll do good and they'll be not just great dancers but they'll be um, great people too that's my that's my mission but um, check my blog out because uh, there's a little more detail in there and I also include some information on conditioning and cardio exercises because that's what I do okay bye thanks for joining me